You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. Twisted Tales. Or should the Book of Judges be censored? Many of us are used to stories from Judges from Sunday school, and we think of the book as an innocuous collection of tall tales. In fact, it's not quite so simple. Why, in chapter 3 we have Ehud and the disgusting tale of murder in the toilet. And then, in chapters 4 and 5, the story of Deborah plays serious games with gender stereotypes. Even the prose account highlights Barak, the hero who won't go to battle unless Auntie Deb holds his hand, and stresses how a woman will defeat Sisera, and makes fun of Sisera with Jael telling him not to be afraid, and then tucking him up in bed before she smashes a tent peg through his head into the ground below. In the poem in chapter 5, while Sisera's mother is busy speculating with her servants about how many Israelite women Sisera and his men will find to rape, Jael is feeding the poor man milk, and then penetrating his head with a tent peg. Freud would have a field day, as they say. And then there's Gideon, that hero of the Sunday school. If you read Gideon's story carefully, it's a bit less clean-cut than the Sunday School version we all remember. We usually stop reading after doubting Gibeon and the Fleeces, or maybe we read on for the superhero stuff with trumpets and torches and pots. It's after that that the story gets a bit dubious. Jephthah's tale is a nice one of human sacrifice not human sacrifice to please a demanding God, but to satisfy a father's pride. Samson's one of the few suicides in Scripture, and then it gets worse. Thieving Micah and the idol he makes from the cash he stole from his mum. And just to make sure you get the point that this is not a book full of nice stories, there's the lovely tale of the Levite's lady. Well, it highlights all the feasting, before getting to the meaty bit. So, to avoid some homosexual gang rape, the Levite's host offers the men of the town his virgin daughter and the Levite's lady for their amusement. Somehow the virgin escapes. But when the Levite opens the door the next morning to start his journey again, the fate of his lady having somehow slipped his mind, he finds her dying on the doorstep. Being a considerate master, and seeing as how she's been gang-raped all night, he just says, Up and let's be going. When she fails to answer, he takes her home and butchers her body as a cause for war. And the book, which began with Israel oppressed by foreigners, ends in civil war. It's a horrid, grubby book, with few redeeming features. Back in the days when censorship laws had teeth, Lawyers used to argue for literary and artistic merit to excuse the content of Lady Chatterley's Lover or the latest banned book. The stories in Judges are certainly well told, but does that alone excuse their presence in the Bible? They're nasty, horrid tales. Grubby. So can the mere fact that they're well told be sufficient to justify them. Or is it the message of the book as a whole? You see, the book as a whole ends with one final verse. After all those tawdry tales. In those days, Israel wasn't ruled by a king and everybody did what they thought was right. Just remembering that sequence of horrid, warped and twisted tales in Judges. I'm sold. People need rules, and a ruler to apply them. In those days Israel wasn't ruled by a king, and everyone did what they thought was right not a good look. That's the end of the book of Judges, but it's not really the end of the story. 
wait for the next instalment bye for now wait for the next instalment bye for now